Welcome everyone back to the channel. I am Unclever Yudo and today we're going to talk to you about how to set up Streamlabs OBS for PC and with the Elgato capture card. And we're also going to talk about setting up for Twitch and YouTube. So we're going to talk about what you need, what you need to do, and how to do it. So let's get on into the video, eh? Alrighty, so we're going to get into what you need to set this up. Now, this is a list of everything for both PC and people using the Elgato capture card. So what you're going to need to do is have yourself a nice PC, capable of gaming obviously, um, if you're here to set it up for gaming. You'll need the Elgato capture card, this will work with the HD60, 60S or 64K models. For PS4 users you'll need the chat link cable, this can be purchased from Elgato themselves or from your probably from your local store you bought the capture card from. You also need a few HDMI cables and the Elgato capture card comes with a USB cable you need to connect this to your PC. Uh, you will need a monitor, a minimum of one, two is substantially better. You will need your normal keyboard and mouse accessories for your PC. You also need a microphone. Uh, I personally use the Blue Yeti mic. Uh, you don't need to go that far out into the microphone world to get a decent one. If you want to just get a nice one, you could always go for the Snowball. Or if you simply just want to use the one attached to your headset, that will work as well. Now you can also use a webcam, but that is completely optional. But if you want to uh, put your face in stream, it is necessity. You also need a headset for your console. Now this can be any sort of headset, you just have a standard plug-in set of earphones if you wish. But if you want to chat with your mates, you'll need a microphone headset. So, now that we've got all the equipment set up, let's go. Alrighty, now we're going to want to do. Now you'll need to get everything connected up as this awesome diagram will show you with one monitor and for two monitors and with or without the Elgato capture card you'll see them all sliding across the screen if you're unsure you can pause it at any time but it is pretty self-explanatory now in terms of software you'll need to download Streamlabs OBS um, the reason I recommend this one is because after using a few other OBS pieces of software this is by far the easiest to use and when it's all set up it gives, it gives it a good pop a good wow factor link to Streamlabs OBS is down in the description below if you don't already have it but if you do, then just, just open it up. Now Streamlabs also has a sub program called Stream Labels, and you'll need to download that at a later point. But it's neither an SSD right now, but I can talk you through that setup later on in the video. Uh, it's more for YouTube than it is for Twitch. Uh, while you have this and you're installing things, make sure all the drivers are updated for your microphone and your camera. And now you also need to install the Elgato software. That uh, sounds pretty counterproductive, but you still need it. Link to the downloads for that is in the description below as well, but you also need to have that updated, installed, and ready to go. And once you've done all that, we can move on to setting up sort of the bits of software. So we'll go set up the bit of software to start with. So we get too in depth, we'll go in depth in a second, but we'll get it sorted. Now you have everything installed and updated on your computer, you can set up Streamlabs. You'll need to log in with either your Twitch or YouTube login. Now I have not used this for Mixer, but once I've done that, if it's any different, I will comment down below and upload a new video. But if it's the same, I'll just say it's the same, follow from da 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 to da da da. But we'll see how that goes, eh? Let's start configuring for Twitch. Alrighty, now we're going to configure this for Twitch. Now configuring this for Twitch is by far the easiest out of Twitch and YouTube that I've done so far. And one thing you'll need is your stream key. Now if you're not sure where the stream key is located, I can help you with that. Uh, go to your Twitch dashboard. Under settings, you'll find channel settings, uh, and you'll see in the little blurred out box there, or little dots, whoever you, your display has it, that is your stream key. Now do not share your stream key with anybody, <laughs> as it is a link to your channel and allows others to stream as you, or to your Twitch account. So if you want to copy that, go ahead and copy it now, or just put it to the side, we'll use it a bit later. Now, we're going to set up Streamlabs. Now with Streamlabs opened, You'll see across the top, you'll see Dashboard, Chat Box, App Store, Themes, Editor, and Live. Okay. You're going to click on Themes inside the OBS window. Now, you'll see a lot of themes. So if you want to pause this video right now, feel free to do so and choose a theme that you'd like. Uh, but you can always download more later on and play with them. As you've set it up, you'll be, able, you'll, you'll be able to chop and change things crazy quick. So adding a new theme in is no drama. So you just want to get it set up, ready to go. Click on the first theme you see and we'll go from there. Now once you have found a theme you've liked, install it. It's just, you click on the theme, to the left of it, you, oh, to the right of it, sorry, not on the left, I can I see a mirror image. Click on the right side there, you'll see one that says install, install that theme. And now if you want to wait 
gives you a bit of a slow internet connection uh, or something's going wrong pause the video again and just wait for that now once that's all done uh, you'll now go to the editor and you'll see it as on the bottom left you'll see what it's called there and it'll have a list of icons saying starting soon live scene intermission be right back ending soon or offline we may not have all those but we'll have a majority of those set up they will be causing a difference so select through them and see what you got and you'll also notice on the right of that box that you see with live scene starting soon so you'll see a, a lot of different different options in that sources box there's where we're going to start editing some stuff now make sure you are all set up ready to go from here you want to make sure it's, it is done do not proceed unless it is completely done so now you've got that set up we're going to talk about your display uh, so to set up your display for PC users who aren't using the Elgato capture card you'll want to go and click on next to sources the little plus icon once you've done that you will see display capture you want to click on display capture and go add source now if you are using Elgato capture card and PC this is where you want to name that source PC screen or PC window or PC whatever you want to call it just to make it easier to go on from there once you've done that hit done and then auto adjust that to fit the screen like I do on the video above you don't need to change too much because it auto detects your resolution and you just drag and make it the same size as the Elgato window or shrink it depends on how big it made it for you now for Elgato capture card users it is much the same click on the plus in the source little tab there but we want to go add a video capture device you want to click on add source you want to name the source because if you are using PC and Elgato you don't want to get it too confused if you are only using Elgato it doesn't really matter but it does make it easier for later on Name this Elgato Capture Card or Game Capture um, Console or Console Capture, whatever you want to name it, it's all easy to good. You want to go add the source and now you'll see a drop down where it says device. You want to select your Elgato Capture Card. Once you've done that, just hit done and same like the PC users, adjust it to fit the screen of the Elgato. The, sorry, the Streamlabs OBS, not Elgato. Sorry. Alright, so you've done all that, it's all done. That's the display side of things, completely done. It makes it nice and easy. Um, that your now display is ready to ready to move on. And you can add this add, you can resize this at any time and adjust it if you wish to, or change the setup or the resolution to your to your liking. But this is the basics of how you get it done. And now we're gonna move on to sort of editing the little boxes on the screen to represent what you want them to do. So let's get into that. Already now I've set up the display capture for PC users and the Elgato capture card users. We're going to talk about the alert boxes. Now you want to maneuver these around the screen as where you feel they should be. So for some of you it's underneath the webcam. For some of you who don't have a webcam it's at the top of the screen like myself or the bottom of the screen or you know however you want to do it it's entirely up to you. You can play around these as much as you want. You can change the headers in them. Uh, you can change what they display, but you can play around those as much as you wish. But once they're set up, they're, they're, they're really easy to maneuver and manipulate. You just got to double click on the source itself and tell it what you want to do. As said, Twitch makes that nice and easy. Uh, YouTube, for YouTube users, I'll talk to you later on about how to change those because they are not set up for you off the bat like they are for Twitch. So play around with them. Let me know what you come up with. Comment down below. Comment your stream down below. I'll come check it out and see what you've done with this video. And as I said, Twitch is the easiest to set up. So if you're using Twitch, you really just have to download the theme, plug it in a few, you know, delete a few things, add the display capture, and you basically can go. Now, for the next part, you will need to add the chat box for Twitch users, because I found that the one that it, the themes have doesn't work. Now, to add the chat box is really simple. On the OBS main screen under the editor tab, you will see Alloy, which is the one I've got, or you'll see Budokai, Hellfire, whatever you've selected as your theme. You'll then see Sources. Back to the Sources, hit the little plus icon again, and on the Widgets side, you'll see Standard, and then on the right of that, you'll see Widgets. There's one called Chat Box. Click on that, and then go Add Source. And that's it, and then just go Add. All done. 
uh, and that will add the chat box. You position that to where you want it to be and that will start working. And that's, that's really as simple as that. Now all that's left to get you truly going is your mic and your camera. Now mic is, is easy to go, as long as it's plugged in and set as your default device, uh, streamers will enable it. You may need to mess with the volumes around and add a like sound gate in there, but that's easy to do. Um, so if you want a loud, noisy environment, adding a noise gate is really, really helpful. This has a cut off point of any background noises where it won't turn the mic on so you can start using it. It waits for you to talk because you're quite close before it allows it to work. Um, so I can show you how to do that. So for adding that, you will then go to the mixer. So you got whatever your theme is, sources, and then mixer. Go down to the mic slash aux, you'll see that. Click on the settings button. You'll see filters. Click on filters, and then you open another window up for you. There's a plus and a minus symbol on the left hand side, middle of the page. Click on plus and you'll see noise gate click on noise gate and this is where you have to play around with it quite a bit because if it's not right for you it's not right for you now my close thresholds negative 43 and my open thresholds at negative 26 um, it seems to work for me it works quite fine but it says that you may need to play around with it a little bit more to get it working for you now to add the camera it's much the same as adding everything else we've added so far you want to go back to the sources click on the little plus icon whoop, and it's video capture device again because it is capturing video now instead of selecting Elgato game capture you'll be selecting your camera model um, also name this webcam or camera that's why I said naming these sources is quite important um, name its camera leave it all as default and then click done position it to where you've added the frame if you've got a frame there or just move it to where you want it on screen it's nice and easy once that's all done you're basically ready to go now for you twitch users you're pretty much set up but you may have forgotten hey unclear you, you tell me to copy the stream key or have it sitting to the side I haven't done anything with it yet <laughs> but I'll save it till last because it is the last part now to do this you'll need to click on the settings in the top right corner of the OBS window not the one near sources or mixer or anything like that you'll see it's a little cog top right you'll see me click onto it in the video and this is where you're going to add your stream key now click on stream and select the service you want now for you guys using twitch you'll select twitch leave the server as as the default now with the stream key you copied or you're about to copy if you've done it they'll see a little box named stream key Co paste it into there now click done just click done in case you change anything accidentally click done and now you want to open settings again and now we need to go to output on the streaming now on the streaming drop down of output you're going to leave the audio track now if you have a nvidia graphics card in your pc you'll need to change it to nvenc if you're not using an nvidia graphics card do not change it now with the output resolution um, to set I do suggest starting at 1280 by 720 leave the rate control as it is and now the harder part is selecting your bitrate now I have what I th I've found to work the best and I've used a few sources online this works the best um, so use these bit rates you see on screen so if you're doing uh, 720p you want between 1500 and 4000 and that will depend on what your net allows uh, if you want to go a bit lower than that, you'll see it on screen. I also have it in the description below, or just hit pause and you'll see it on screen. Now this may require some tinkering, but just let your viewers know that you are testing stuff out. If you are testing stuff out, because you have to do it in a live environment, and then you've all done that, just hit the done button. Now I do suggest getting used to your scenes and what the panels in each scene does. If you want to mess with them, um, you can't really stuff it up. If you're unsure, just click cancel back out of it. Don't save it. But you're actually done. Everyone using Twitch is now set up, ready to go. Now, heavy streaming Twitch goals. If you want to promote yourself, I do a promote yourself stream every week on a Sunday New Zealand time. Uh, so feel free to follow my Twitch link is in the description below. If you want to check out my stream and see what I've done with my setup, be sure to do so. And if you want me to let you get yours, just tag me and comment your Twitch link down below. I'll be sure to check that out. And now we're going to move on for you YouTube users. Alright YouTube users, uh, sorry for making you wait till last, it's just that yours is a, a little bit harder to set up. Almost everything is identical. Almost 
everything. Now the chat box does not work for you, as I found out. I've been playing around with it for a few days now and I cannot get it to work. If I can, I will comment down below later on in the video, or I'll just say it's been amended by the time I upload this video, it depends on how long it takes. Now before you even attempt this, you need to make sure you have streaming enabled with your channel. If you have not got it enabled, it won't work. So I suggest you pump and grind those videos and get that streaming enabled. Or if it is already enabled, you'll have a stream key and we need to go grab that stream key. So we need to click, click on Creator Studio. You'll see a streaming tab left hand side on the page. You'll then see an encoder set up on that page and there's a stream key there, just copy that. Alright, so to put that into OBS, you've obviously logged in with YouTube on OBS. You've followed almost everything else to this point in time. Now much like the Twitch, you need to go into the right top corner OBS window, like I show you in the video, click on stream, select your service as YouTube slash YouTube gaming, leave the server, and then put your stream key just below that in the box that it allows you. And then you're done. Opening the settings again, you need to go to output into the streaming drop down, leave the audio track on the encoder if you have a video graphics card again, use the NVENC drop down. If not, don't change it. Um, and Basically, you'll need to change your bitrate as I explained before in the video. If you need it again, I'll leave the timestamp for the bitrates on screen right now so you can go back and watch it. And then once that's all done, you may need some tinkering. And if you're doing tinkering in a live environment, please let your viewers know. Uh, just say testing and people are, people are all good with that. And then once you've done all that, just hit the done button. Now I said I haven't got the chat box to work. I still haven't. It's still not working for me. I don't know what's going on. but. Once it's all done, I'll post an update on my page. So if you want to feel, feel free to subscribe to this channel and I'll keep updated as much as I can. Now this is where it gets really, really tricky. Uh, because unlike Twitch where the it's all set up ready to go for you, uh, your most recent subscriber and super chatter or whatever isn't an automatic thing you've got on screen. So we're going to talk about how to add those for you YouTube users. Now you'll need to download stream labels. This can be found in OBS. You just gotta click the dashboard and in the top left corner in the top left corner of the OBS screen. Now you'll see a little drop down thing in widgets on the left side. You wanna expand on that, then click stream labels and then click download for your OS. If you've got Windows, download for Windows. If you've got OS 6, download for OS 6. Once installed, run the program. Alright, so once it's all done and installed, ready to go, you'll see the top part, you'll see stream labels. On the left hand side of that, you'll, you'll see a folder icon. You need to click on that. Now, this is exporting the data. Now, you'll need to, it will ask you where to save it. Now, you want to save it somewhere where you can find it because <laughs> you need this data. So, I created my own folder where I save my recordings. I named it YouTube Data because I'm lazy and that's what I wanted to do. Um, and once you've done that, you can sort of minimize the stream levels app and have it in the background. You don't need to use it, but it, you just make sure you, you remember where you've saved that data. Because now we're going to use it. Now go back to your Streamlabs OBS window, and you want to click on your Live Scene tab. In the Sources, now we're going to hit the plus button again. It looks like we have done for everything we've added to the stream, so it's really simple to get a hand. But you'll see how you'll see how it sort of flows. Um, now you want to add this text you've saved. So you're going to click on the text and in brackets GDI, as I do in the video here, and add the source. And now it depends on which text you want to save. So for me, it was now I saved mine as most recent YouTube subscriber because I am lazy and it's just easy. Now you want to go next. Now to make this easy, you want to click on the read, click the read from file box, and now next to that you'll see a browse. This is where you browse for the data you've just saved. Now in that folder you'll see a bunch of text files and you want to find the one that says most recent YouTube subscriber. Once you've clicked on that, click done and it'll add it to your screen. Now you'll fit this according to your layout. Now you will notice that your there might be something there already if you are a Twitch streamer as well or just be a blank box. Um, just chuck it over top of the wherever you want to put this on your screen with your little logos. Uh, and once you've done that, you just click away from it and it's done, it's there. Now, 
because of the way this works for YouTube, it is a bit more tedious in getting it to refresh all the time. That's why having two screens makes it a lot easier. It sometimes will not auto refresh the newest subscriber for you. So if you want that subscriber to feel special like I do, every time I stream, anyone who subscribes to my channel or follows me, it is awesome and I want you to be recognized for that. You may need to just hit the refresh button in stream labels and it'll refresh and then put them on screen for you. So once you've got that source file saved and you've selected which source file you want to pull the data from, once it changes, you, sometimes you'll just need to refresh it and it'll auto, re or auto refresh for you. It depends on how it's working that day and it'll show that person that you've recognized they've followed you or subscribed to your channel and then now they're on screen. Now much like me, you probably have a second box, and mine is for Super Chat, the most recent Super Chat in their dollar amount. If you want to do that, just follow the steps as we did just before, as I show you on screen, and just do just select a different text box and move it to location. Now you can edit the headers as I've as you do, so you can then go back into sources, find the one that says follower or new follower and just double click on that and edit what text it says so most recent youtube subscriber i'll show you how to do that in the video above as you can see i'm doing it right now and that's it once you've edited all those remove the chat boxes you can hide them click the little eye icon to hide stuff unclick it if you want to bring it back to light but that is that simple everything else is now done you've set up youtube you've put your stream key in you've put your most recent sub in. you've put your super chatter in you've let those people know that they've subscribed to you and you recognize them and you appreciate what they're doing to help you grow as a content creator you're good to go that is it so i suggest you load up a game hit that live button go live and you start streaming to youtube and you enjoy yourself you are good to go now good luck everyone have fun i hope this video helps you out so much as it did help me it was easier to write it and explain it hope the video helps and if you want to see me do more videos like this comment down below what you'd like to see i have everything you need in the description every bit rate every website you need to go to it's all there and you can always ask me a question in the comments now if this video was helpful a sub would be greatly appreciated as i'm trying to grow this year and trying to do some pretty amazing content for you guys but until next time everyone, enjoy your time, enjoy your stream, and as always, bye.